Hi, my name is Tio Dinescu, and this summer I worked in the cartilage tissue engineering lab under Dr. Robert Saw in the Department of Bioengineering, and my project was the localization and quantification of mineral deposition at the cartilage bone interface. So articular cartilage can become damaged in a number of ways, most commonly through acute sports injuries. And if this damage goes all the way to the bone, you can imagine that bone rubbing up against bone would be very painful. So one of the most effective ways for treating these uh, localized defects is something called an osteochondral allograft, which is basically a cylindrical plug of cartilage and bone fused together in its native configuration and then placed within the defect. So there's a high demand for size-matched allografts, but there's not enough donors, so there's substantial interest in tissue engineering one of these osteochondral allografts. So the basic knee joint consists of three general areas, which is the articular cartilage, and then the subchondral bone plate, and then the trabecular bone below that. So articular cartilage is smooth and load-bearing, and it covers the end of bones, but the problem is that there's no blood vessels within that region, so it can't regenerate if there's any damage to it. Um, so the articular cartilage is supported by the subchondral bone plate, and then as I mentioned, that consists of the zone of calcified cartilage and then the subchondral bone. And the zone of calcified cartilage contains hydroxyapatite as its primary material. And one of the challenges to engineering the osteochondral allograft is engineering this zone of calcified cartilage. So previous work in the UCSD CTE lab has uh, developed the feasibility of a double diffusion system to engineer a region similar in morphology as the native zone of calcified cartilage. And this works by placing cartilage and bone within an agarose hydrogel and then diffusing uh, calcium and phosphate bulk solutions in parallel through the double diffusion chamber and then the interface will form between the cartilage and the bone. So while a lot of uh, qualitative information has been obtained through this system, not a lot of imaging data has been obtained. So my project was to develop image analysis methods to localize and visualize this hydroxyapatite mineral between the cartilage and the bone and then to quantify the amount of mineral in these regions. So for my methods, I used four engineered uh, sample groups and I compared two variables, calf and adult articular cartilage and then at two different time variables, three and seven days. So these before and after image data sets were registered in a program called Data Viewer by rotating the samples and using similar landmarks within the samples to align them so that way we could compare in the same location both before and after and then in the difference data set and they were registered using their grayscale values from 0 being black to 255 being white and then a difference image data set was obtained by subtracting these values so if something was present after but not before then it would um, attenuate as white in the difference image data set, which is what we were looking for. That's basically the newly calcified material. So representative 2D images were created at different locations. And then this is what I did for all 12 engineered samples for the four groups. So for this specific, for these specific images, this was from group three, the calf adult articular cartilage at seven days. So the middle slices represent the cartilage bone interface, and then the left slice is a little bit below towards the bone side, and then the right slice is a little bit above towards the cartilage side. So you can see that there's different shades of gray, the black region being air or air pockets within the bone before the sample, and then the green being a gray that was fluid that was within the bone sample and then the white being bone. So this is also visible on this histogram of voxel brightness versus intensity. So you can see three general peaks in the black, gray, and white regions. And as I explained before, that was uh, black being air, gray being fluid, or the gel um, above the bone, and then the white representing the bone. So then these samples were also scanned after and they look very similar but you can see the newly calcified material present and then now there's um, black regions are only visible around 
because in this image, um, there was actually black regions within the bone sample, and that was air pockets. So that's why um, in future studies, the samples need to be fully immersed in fluid to prevent these air pockets. And then the green arrow points to the gray region that's um, fluid within the gel, and then the white um, is shown by the red arrow, and that's the bone. And as before, the histogram still has three general peaks because there's uh, the newly calcified material is only in a very specific spot. And as I mentioned before, there's 500 slices, and this is just a very small region of the entire sample. And then the difference image set um, is this image subtracted, or this image subtracted from this image, and then shown here. So ideally, anything that was exactly the same would attenuate as gray. So you can see most of it is gray because most of it was exactly the same. The black regions um, signify stuff that was present before but not after. So that's typically just stuff that shifted around. And then the white is the stuff that we're interested in. And that's the newly calcified material and you can see that it is present and we did localize it using these images and you can see some small little air pockets and that's simply because there was air in the sample before so the developed image analysis methods would allow for the semi-automated analysis of the samples and you could analyze it for density, thickness, and volume and that's what I'm currently in the process of doing. And then future studies could apply these image analysis methods to native tissue and that would allow for further analysis and further comparison of the engineered interface to native zone of calcified cartilage and you could see if the engineered interface was similar in morphology and you could apply it to engineering an osteochondral allograft. So I want to thank um, Qualcomm and CalIT2 Institute and the National Institute of Health, the CTE Lab, Dr. Saw, and Amira for giving me this opportunity to work in the lab this summer. Thank you.